Welcome to another episode of the Ever Black Podcast. On the show, we are joined once again by the one and only Danny Filth from Cradle of Filth, who will be touring Australia to celebrate their Cruelty and the Beast album, which turned 20 last year. I remember when that album came out and almost everyone I knew had it and the, and the posters and the shirts and uh, just Cradle had just exploded. They were just everywhere and uh, it definitely changed the game, that record. Uh, it was just massive down here and uh, they also managed to piss off a lot of people with their artwork too, which uh, definitely pushed the boundaries and uh, got a lot of people in trouble in school, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, Denny is also a really good dude too and uh, he's always up for a good laugh and uh, as well as he tells some amazing stories from that period of time in the band's career. Uh, I loved hearing everything about the making of it and uh, him tracking his vocals and writing lyrics and things like that. I just I wish I could have been a fly on the wall for all of that. It would have just been uh, mind-blowing and just total pandemonium. It would have been a crazy, crazy time back in 98 uh, seeing... Uh, Young Danny Filth just running amok. It would have been uh, incredible. Uh, the tour kicks off on Tuesday the 3rd of September at the Capitol in Perth and then goes to uh, the Gov on Wednesday the 4th of September in Adelaide, Friday the 6th of September at 170 Russell in Melbourne, Saturday the 7th of September at the Valley Drive-In in Brisbane, Sunday the 8th of September at the Metro Theatre in Sydney, Tuesday the 10th of September at the basement in Canberra and then wrapping up on Thursday the 12th September the studio in Auckland in New Zealand for all uh, you Kiwis over there you get to see some uh, Cradle of Filth it's going to be unreal alright so tickets are on sale now from destroyerlines.com uh, get them now before they sell out it's going to be uh, such a massive uh, celebration of cr- Cruelty and the Beast uh, in the meantime go and stream it Go revisit it. If you haven't listened to it in a while, it still holds up. Even some of those little, uh, like the keyboard sounds sometimes sound a little uh, uh, outdated and out of its time. But overall, the whole album is just still incredible. And uh, Danny's vocals, is nothing like it. Before we go into the interview, I have to mention this episode is brought to you by our good friends at Blacklight Art and Design, who are our go-to for all our screen printing needs. They've done all our shirts and hats for Ever Black Media, and they've got such a quick turnaround. I highly recommend checking these guys out. www.blacklightad.com. The show is also brought to you by our good friends at RW Promotion, who are the best in the biz when it comes to stickers, flyers, banners, badges, and all other promo you need for your band or business. Go say hey to Rich and the team at www.rwpromotion.com.au. Uh, also, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Ever Black podcast through iTunes, Spreaker, and uh, YouTube. And we've also started uploading it to Facebook directly now, which is uh, really cool. So really appreciate everyone sharing uh, the interviews and uh, interacting with us. It's really, really cool. Thank you very much, guys. All right. So here is my interview with the one and only Danny Filth from Cradle of Filth. Get your tickets now to the tour. Crank Cruelty and the Beast. Show it some love because it's uh, such an incredible album. Horns high, guys. Enjoy. Hello. Hey, Danny. How are you, man? I'm good, thank you. Awesome, that's good to hear, man. It's great to talk to you on the show again. You're coming back down to Australia to uh, celebrate the album Cruelty and the Beast, which turned 20 last year. And it's a very important record for a lot of people I know. And you're playing it in full, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. The the main uh, part of the set is Cruelty and the Beast. And then we come back and do, um, you know, like a bunch of fan favourites and uh, and a few uh, surprises. Awesome, man. You know, even though you've played a few of those tracks live over the years, and, and has it been a challenge to bring some of the others you haven't played in a while out of hibernation and introducing them back in? Well, it was at first, obviously. Um, yeah. Like I say, I mean, the album was the album was difficult enough to play when we recorded it. Maybe <laughs> 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 actually twenty one years ago, but um, yeah, it's uh, it was difficult at first, but we've now played the album. We, we did a bunch of shows in Europe. We did Russia with it. Uh, we've done some select, uh, some festival dates playing cruelty. Um, yeah, we're pretty good at it now, I think. I'm trying to remember, did you guys tour here on that, that tour cycle? We did, yeah, but we didn't play the album in its entirety, no. No, 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 because I'm just trying to remember, man, like 20 years, 21 years ago. 
pretty crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We, we did we did do it on the cruelty tour. Oh, I remember man. because I was bitten by a possum on that on that particular tour. You got what by a possum? Bitten. Are you, are you, did you have to go to hospital or something? What, what happened? I just had a I had to have a rabies jab. That was it. Oh, <laughs> that's bizarre. Because they're not usually. Uh, they yeah, usually exactly. Everything in, the in your country. It doesn't matter how cute it looks. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, but uh, not funny for you. But just because they leave us behind, no. they're more scared of us. So yeah. <laughs> well, I know the tour is definitely going to ma- make a lot of people happy, man. Like I remember when it came out, and it just had such a massive presence. It it changed the game in a lot of ways. All of a sudden, there were cradle posters with the cover on bedroom doors and shirts, and even like bands here were, were trying to copy your sound and, and style. It must be just such a crazy time in '98, especially for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was a a big stepping stone for us onto the bigger and better things that record and uh yeah i mean it was our second few music for nations but it was our first really at getting sort of globally recognized as, mm. as, a, as a force to be reckoned with and people started taking us seriously and yeah we did we did some great tours uh around that record uh went back to america uh like say australia japan um yeah it was the first time for a lot of things and yeah, it was, it was it was a crazy time. Uh, that was around the same time as living with the enemy. We got arrested at the Vatican uh, oh. on the first dates of the cruelty, cruelty tour. Russia, yeah, yeah, had mad mad cap time in Russia. Um, so yeah, I, I look back on that time with some memories. So I guess when you're playing some of these songs, to, I don't know how, how it is for you live, but do, do you sort of little little memories like that sort of pop in your head? If you're playing somewhere and you go, oh man, I remember this happened here when we were playing at this time. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, we play. Well, we've toured the world now, God knows how many times. Um, mm. Sometimes twice at one record, as for this particular. Album. Yeah, sometimes there, there's always venues you replay, or there are, like you say, there's places you go. Oh, I remember this. <laughs> Jesus Christ, we haven't been here for 15 years or whatever. Uh, that's why they look at us funny. And it's been remastered and, and reissued. Is that right? Did I read that right? Well, it was it, it was re, it was remixed and remastered from the original tapes. We had to um, transfer them from the actual tapes into digital. Um, it took a long time as well to actually because we had to pick the whole album apart to to bring it kicking and screaming back into like a, a modern production. Because <laughs> that was the one thing about the album is like it, the production lacked a little bit. So. We thought that tomorrow, the 20th anniversary, we'd fully remix it and, and make it sound amazing, which we did. Uh, we did a whole bunch of press that hadn't been released by Sony. All the artwork was done. Um, some original material from the original artists and the mm. original photo sessions. Um, lyric video was done, etc., etc., etc. And then Sony failed to tell us that they hadn't cleared the albums of previous members and said previous members have just like said, no, we don't want it released. Uh, just to be spiteful, really, I think. Um, it's only a couple of people, uh, but it's just, it's it's meant that we haven't, I mean, this was going to come out this time last year, so uh, it's all kind of in limbo, really. But it hasn't deterred from the fact that people have been really enjoying, mm. uh, or fans have been really enjoying the uh, shows. I mean, obviously, it would be much better with the press behind it and the album, and people go like, "Wow, this sounds fucking amazing!" But it is what it is, um, and hopefully, at some point, it will see the light of day. Yeah, I definitely hope so, man. Because it sounds like you put a hell of a lot of work into it. I mean, yeah, you know. we did. Yeah, it, it sounds it sounds phenomenal. It sounds awesome. We we totally, you know, I mean, it sounds like a, a very big sounding modern album, but it still has that window back into. 1998, because obviously we try to retain as much of the atmosphere as possible. Mm. We didn't want to strip it away. So it, it just sounded good. It sounds like Cruelty and the Beast just a lot better. Oh, dude. Uh, hopefully you hear that one day. And when, when it came to writing the lyrics, how long did it take you from sort of the seed of the idea to recording? I mean, were there a few drafts, you know, you, you had to get through? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely, and, and bearing in mind that it's a concept record and it all runs concurrently, it was, uh, it, it was a real labour of love. Like, the curses lifted 
with the mm. release of the bloody thing. Uh, I just remember it really, it was vampiric, you know, it really sucked the life out of us, but it was, it was worth it. You know, we worked really, really hard on that record. Um, yeah, and the lyrics obviously took, well, I mean, it was, uh, con- like I say, a conceptual album, story, some of the songs are stories within stories. Uh, yeah. But it, the, the whole overarching theme runs concurrently. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you you got to weave that around the music and, and the music got to weave that around the vocals. So, yeah, it took a while. Because it's insanely complex, that album. You know, I've heard it so many times over the years, but it's it, every time, I, it just blows me away. Like, mapping out the vocal part sounds like it would have been a mission too. And then you've got the guests coming in and, and just trying to make everything sort of flow would have been quite a hell of a task. Uh, so, yeah, uh, absolutely. Was it was it like that when you were trying to go back and you you know when you were remastering and stuff like that? Is it how many? I mean, how many? Do you remember just doing vocal take and vocal take and vocal take layering? Um, no, no. I mean, actually, the vocals. Uh, I remember it taking a long time to get to the point of doing the vocals, and mm. uh, by the time we got to it, I was like, worked myself so so up into like a frenzy of wanting to do it that I couldn't mm. sing at all. Uh, uh-huh. And then my, sing- my singing tutor recommended, I remember her recommending like a little thumb of, well, I didn't know this, like uh, port, like the opera singers. Except that I took it a bit to heart and I, I ended up drinking this massive bottle of port. And it worked. And like I burst through the wall and, tried, and it was brilliant. But the next day I had almost the fucker of a hangover. <laughs> 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 it was horrible. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but it, it served its purpose, you know. It got me on the road to uh, laying the vocals. And after that, it was relatively quick, actually, to be honest. Have you have you ever considered doing, like, a, a big cradle with a symphony orchestra type gig? Yeah, we've been offered... We were actually going to do um, a Court in the Beast with... Um, also this play that was written by Dennis Bathory, who was one of the last living descendants of Elizabeth Bathory. She, he'd actually written an opera about uh, wow. her, that, her namesake to be performed at a, ca- at a castle as well, nonetheless. But we couldn't get permission. I mean, this was ages ago, and it just didn't gather permission. Mm. Um, also, yeah, I mean, we've been offered to play with a full orchestra and everything, but it's just at the moment everybody's doing it or everybody's done it and yeah. we were just biding our time it was like we'll just wait when it's like unfashionable again because <laughs> it would sound incredible i mean even like midian you know with the whole concept with that as well um that that would yeah, be exactly. yeah like yeah expensive too i i'm guessing but uh yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Um, you've also been working with Des from Devil Driver, who's been managing Cradle. He seems like he genuinely really cares about your career and the band. And I spoke to him recently. He said his wife and him shared their first kiss to a Cradle song, which is pretty awesome. How's yeah. it working with him? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, phenomenally. I mean, he's got so much passion and, and, and uh, devil drive for everything. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it just really fires up, fires us up. He's constantly available. You know, he's got some great ideas. Yeah, I mean, we're very happy uh, as part of the Oracle family. It's great. And, uh, yeah, I mean, shortly after this bout of interviews tonight, I'll be getting back on the phone with him because we've got some other really interesting plans, things coming up that haven't been announced yet that we're formulating. So, yeah, it's, it's very exciting. And I, I like that. I like, uh, I like constantly having that sort of fire in your belly. And uh, you know, being managed by Des and Anastasia, yeah, they they, they really provoke that. Yeah, and they're, they're good people, man. They're really good people. Yeah, like, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Best. And plus, like you've got other other bands, like you've got Wednesday Thirteen and Combi Christ as well. I'd love to see all you guys do like a big Oracle festival. That'd be sick. All the bands together. Yeah, <laughs> maybe absolutely. Maybe yeah, well, we played we played with both those bands uh, recently. Actually, we, we took. Uh, Wednesday 13 across the states of us, and we've done a bunch of summer festivals at Comedy Christ. Oh man, what a, that'd be sick! But hey, man, in the meantime though, you're going to be heading it back down here, as we were saying before. So uh, you know, this is what. How many times you've been to Australia? Do you think now? Uh, I think it's five. I mean, it will be five in total. So uh, uh, is there any? Yeah. 
Is there anything on the uh, you know on the like we've seen some around the tour that you're looking forward to doing while you're down here? Going to New Zealand. <laughs> 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 we are actually going to New Zealand, and yes, we are looking forward to it. But that was just a bad joke, actually. No, uh, to be completely serious, uh, koala sanctuaries. Really, we love koala sanctuaries. Yeah, absolutely. We've been to one in. Uh, we've been to two now. One just outside Sydney, and one outside Brisbane. But yeah, I mean, other than that, going back and playing. I mean, it's it's, it's a bit of a, it's a treat for any band because obviously mm. it's so far away. Mm. So it's a, it's it's kind of a rare occurrence that. You know, very limited occurrence that you get the opportunity to come out and play Australia. Yeah, you know, what's more to say? We gave you all our beautiful people. We come to have a look at them. And uh, fuck possums, man. They're assholes, right? <laughs> possums are assholes. They're cute. They're deceptive, deceptively cute. <laughs> so, uh, what's next for Cradle, man? New album after this tour? Um, well, yeah, we've we've got the formulation of some songs. Um, I mean, we've been on tour now. We've been everywhere this year, like four months straight, pretty much. Uh, we're now entering the back end of the festival season, so everything's petering out a little bit up into Australia. And then we've got some uh, dates we haven't announced yet. Following that, and then pretty much we're writing. We've got to be, I think, the plan is to be in the studio back end of January. Uh, with a release date scheduled for September next year. And like I say, we've got, the beginnings of, of songs, we've got a couple of songs mm. already written as well, and it's just getting back into the flow of that and then, you know, finding a direction that suits everybody. Is it like a concept that you've got sort of an idea for? Well, I've got lots of different ideas. It depends, you know. It's it's a case of waiting until you find a direction. Um, mm. And then, you know, it's it's a case of... It's, it's a marriage of what the band do and what I do. Um one doesn't over dictate the other so what we do we wait until we've got i don't like to say about three or four songs and we're happy with them and you can feel there's a direction there and then that will suggest we hope uh a, a, an idea a concept or, or or not a concept you know oh man i'm i'm we'll see how it now. goes yeah i can't wait to hear yeah, what you guys we'll, do next well, well yeah i mean it sounds ace what we've written so thus far but yeah we've we've, we've we're still technically on tour. In fact, technically, we're supposed to be on holiday, but we're not. <laughs> Work got you back into it, to the band. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> well, Danny, it's been great talking to you again, man. And uh, the tour kicks off on September 3 in Perth, but we'll see you in Brisbane on September 7 at the Valley Drive. And until then, stay safe, you and the guys, and uh, just have a kick-ass time on tour, man. Yeah, brilliant. Looking forward to it. Thanks so much for your time.